gentlemen and animals of planet Earth. We are Urban Space Force and we seek to implement a new strategy into the world in a social form that is just that little bit more fun for everyone so that we have a bit more fun. We have a greater philosophical understanding of what it is to be a modern human being under the heavens arguably created by a sentient force. At Irma Space Force, research has gone exceptionally well on occasion over the last 20 years into the supernatural. What that means is that I myself am witness and party to divine moments in my reality, experiences from the supernatural which defy the logic contemporary. You will learn nothing that I know from traditional school at this point in time. And thus, one of the key policies of Urban Space Force is to challenge the current education system with their inculcation to the youth of strong and stringent atheism as a default truism. We at Urban Space Force fully believe, not quite the right word, we fully know, we have evidence of more. This will take too long to explain in this speech. However, you should take it as note that I am not lying. Why would I lie? Why would it, who would it benefit me to tell you this if it was a lie? It would benefit no one. However, to tell you the truth, that's power. That's power. And so Urban Space Force, looking ahead for humanity, would like to reach out our love to you all. I, I'm not going to go into gender specifics or tribal or cultural specifics. Just know that to breathe, to exist, to think and to be a human being is a right afforded ostensibly to all by default of their existence under the canopy of stars. With this said, given the pro-life movements in the world at the moment, some of it so radical, I would stipulate immediately that no woman should have to carry a child created via rape if she does not desire to. The very notion that we should be so liberal in our approach to dealing with the wickedry of others and harbouring some poor person with guilt, problems, monetary issues, shame, sadness, it could ruin their lives. And yet, due to some irregular translation of the scriptures, which isn't in accordance with necessarily the Torah or the Mosaic law of things, we find ourselves once again living in a political hellstorm of people shouting for their rights, for their knowledge, for their intellectualism to be heard, word, and associated with the pinnacle of human triumph, it seems. This is logically irregular. We will never agree on all things, human beings, it seems. And that is presumably because we all live different lives. Or you could say, we all live different perspectives. Now to perceive reality, or rather to observe reality, is the essence of existence somewhat, or reality. Thus, ostensibly, all opinion, thought, feeling, emotion, ra reason, reason, rationality, knowledge, experience, talent, is an individual perspective. It is not a collective agreement. Heaven knows the extreme left are so busy arguing among themselves half the time. They don't really pose a threat to the right. I am neither extreme right nor extreme left. I like to think it's left wing, right wing, cockpit necessary. And only with the cockpit at the centre of the two wings will the bird fly. So with that in mind, I would also like to introduce the concept for a new program in society 
of innovation with regards to exciting ideas such as flying cars, actual lightsabers, possible home-based space exploration in the future, and a, and a myriad of other notions which we all should get onto later. But ostensibly, at the end of the day, what I would like to talk about is not drugs. I am sick to the back death, the back death, the back teeth, of hearing people on drugs talking about drugs. However, having said this, we firmly believe at Urban Space Force that cannabis in the UK should be legalised and that all the proceeds derived therein should go towards the NHS and the mental health unit in particular. Cannabis can lead to psychosis. That is a fact. There's no point quibbling about it. There's no point disputing it. It is known scientific fact. But what we must ask ourselves is why? Why do these small percentage of numbers become very mentally ill after smoking too much cannabis or indeed the far more dangerous chemical drugs? And it seems to me that it is because our drug education is not up to scratch. It should be installed in every school from a young age. They should be shown and given precise information on what each drugs do by the time they're at least 16, 15, 17. And an honest and candid and integral delivery of what each substance means and can do and might do to you. Only then can they make an educated decision as to whether they think a life taking substances would be a wise move. In my experience, I like a drink, I like a fag, I like a joint, right? But I'm still more or less in control even after all those things. On the harder chemical drugs, psychological variances can go into another dimension completely. And what you will find is that you will soon end up ruptured because the mind is not designed to function under the conditions, for instance, of LSD. I last touched LSD 25 years ago and it's been an arduous task clawing back to some semblance of decent, logical, reasonable reality. I had a hell of a time. And this is why I do not easily subscribe to the happy notion of legalising all narcotics. It would be dangerous morally as well as anything else. However, given my horrors at the experience of chemical drugs, and I didn't dabble in them long, only about a year, it was enough to rupture me, nearly to death. And it is because that cannabis is illegal that when I had my first wonderful, amazing experience at the age of 15 on weed, I felt I was being lied to by the government. I was felt I was being robbed of a great philosophical soul truth that could benefit the world and at the end of the day bring world peace. However, the thinking goes in a gateway drug, which it is, there's no disputing it for some cases, I was one, you can't dispute me. Thus, it is clearly evident that for those who have cannabis as a gateway drug, it does lead on to harder, more dangerous things. And there you get the people going to mental hospitals more often. There you get the people going to serious financial crises. There you have the families breaking apart and freaking out on the hardship, okay? So we have to draw a clear distinction, not a vague one, not a grey one, but a clear distinction between cannabis, which is a naturally growing plant, and synthesised chemicals in laboratories, which are ostensibly designed to twist the chemical makeup of your mind to give you an experience that no one can really define or explain to anyone else otherwise, or anyway. So what really is the point in mangling your brain for a good laugh one evening? However, the spiritual benefits of cannabis 
can be seen throughout the world. No one really dies from it. There are, I think there was one or two cases where someone ingesting marijuana did end up dying through some other means. But generally, cannabis is not a source of death, unlike some other drugs. Therefore, what is this hostility towards weed? What is this general ignorant idea that weed is a damaging influence within our society? Yes, it can make you paranoid. And that is the path to mental illness, should you get the fear when imbibing. But also, it can make you super sensual. It highlights the senses, it augments the senses. This is why music sounds amazing. TV looks fantastic. Food tastes great. Our senses are stimulated. On the other drugs, they take it even further to levels where you're almost touching into galactic realms. But that's not going to happen in a logic-based reality where we all want to succeed in rational, logical, intelligent form. However, given America's strength politically within the world, and I include the UK in this, the very fundamental right under the Constitution and the Bill of Rights is the pursuit of freedom and happiness at the end of the day. And if America is to hold sway across the, the globe's ideology, with their often crazy but very amusing in places world of view, we should be prepared to follow suit in order to help those that cannabis helps, to show there is no animosity between us and those slightly more colourful characters who like to enjoy themselves in fields in the summer, and how we are aware of the positive, beneficial and decent effects of cannabis spiritually on the sensorium. Thus, there is not much more to say. This is part of the plan for Urban Space Force to go forward. We want to create a better world for our children. I am a father. And I love my child to bits. And I don't want to deprive her of the life I've had in places because of the timid fear of mortals in their ignorance. I will not be forcing anything onto anyone. But come the time she is old enough, I like to think as a reasonable, liberated, forward-thinking father with some knowledge of narcotics, that if she was to dabble in the weed and it didn't make her paranoid, then I would probably be accepting of her decision there. I would be very concerned if she started dabbling in the strong chemicals and going out to groovy events and whatnot. I know through bitter experience how damaging they can be to your psychology. To illustrate just what I've been through due to too much mind expansion on LSD, I was categorised as schizophrenic after my depression on chemical drugs got to DEFCON 3 level. And thus, I had to repent and go to men of God, psychiatrists, my parents, etc. I was in a terrible way. But cannabis to this day can function as some kind of medicinal element to give me some reason to live, some enjoyment in life, some slightly unique perspective on matters that should shine a light among society, frankly, should make the world a better place, should make life more enjoyable. And it's with this all said and done that I thank you for taking the time to listen to the Urban Space Force Symposium and may we all hold hands, build awesome stuff, and trek into the glorious future under God without fear, without sin where we can, and possibly with a little more acumen and intellect by which to fully nourish this colossally powerful instrument we hold within our craniums. And with that said, my friends, I thank you for listening and wish you well.